Konstantin Kitsos is on the hunt. He's a cosmetic surgeon from Miami. But with the help of safari hunter Barry Style and a team of trackers, he's hoping to bag himself a trophy. In the marginal farmlands of Nyami Nyami district in northern Zimbabwe, this is how the locals conserve their wildlife, by making money from it. Most animals here have a price on their head, and the one with the biggest is the elephant, $11,000. If, if elephant didn't have a value, for instance, it would all be shot as pests. But now because it has got a trophy fee upon it, there is a value to it. At the core of Nyami Nyami district lies Matusadona National Park. It's a sanctuary for all manner of wildlife. Zebra, impala, hippos, and of course, the elephant. Here in Zimbabwe, the elephant is no longer endangered. There are 66,000 of them, and their number is rising as fast, if not faster, than the human population. Unless the two species can devise a plan for living together, there'll be war, and there's no prize for guessing who'll win. Well, I can't imagine anyone seeing an elephant in the wild and not being impressed. On sheer size alone, this is a truly magnificent creature, and one which should be saved. And in this debate, no one is disputing that, not even here in Zimbabwe. But what the Zimbabweans are saying is that banning the sale of ivory is no way to guarantee the long-term survival of the elephant. In a country where humans and wildlife are in constant conflict, they say elephants must pay their way, or else they'll be on the way out for good. See, there's no big tree now. All those big trees are dying, and all here, no vegetation, soil erosion. Zef Mukatiwa is the see, warden at Matusadona. The park, he says, can cope with only 1,500 elephants, one for every square kilometre. At the moment, there's almost double that. Mukatiwa wants to cull 350 elephants before they eat not only themselves but other species out of house and home. Since it is the chief food for elephant, but the population of elephant is affected, it's regrowth. How tall should this tree be? This tree should be as big as that one that was already killed. Was they, that killed by the elephants? Yeah, they removed the bark for food. So what do you think of the decision then to possibly re-allow the trade in ivory? Yeah, this is going to help the management program on a sustainable basis. And uh, we look at this as a good thing. As long as it is regulated, we are happy. Can but it be regulated? Yeah, yes. They say there is a quota for all sale. That is the getting things regulated, that there will be no misuse. 
it's very easy to monitor something that is regulated than just something like say you can cull or you can sell as many tons of ivory. If you're not able to export ivory, what will that mean for the long-term future of the elephant? The people who come here for sport hunting need to take their ivory back. If they cannot take the ivory back to their countries, there is no sport hunting and they can't survive without that. That discourages conservation in Africa. If Minus Maringi Sanwa had her way, there would be no elephants. It's hard enough to scratch a living from this ungiving land without having to share it with the Tuskers. Already this year they've trampled her maize eaten her cotton plants and killed her husband. By the time he did, it was too late. Okay, we are only uh, two and a half acres uh, field of maize, yeah, which was destroyed by elephant. You can see the, the, the tracks of the elephants, mm. which destroyed the maize. Wilson so, Mbiri is, is a nephew of the dead man. Yes, He's also the Nyami Nyami district chairman, the person yes, with the unenviable came. task of convincing that locals that elephants that are worth the, saving. So it's not a, very easy yeah, to, to explain to such uh, uh, families. But if we get benefits, if, if, if ivory is, is sold and money comes back to the community, not at, at a district council level, but if the money goes right down to the community, I think the communities are, are prepared to look after their natural resources. After a day scrabbling through the bush after a herd of buffalo, Constantine finally has his sights set on the old bull. Safe to catch on. If the beast dies, Constantine gets the horns and Nyami Nyami collects the $1,800 trophy fee. Come, Constantine, come. Come, come right up, come right up to him. Come right up to him. Put one in there. Behind his shoulder. Don't hit his horn. Don't huh? hit his horn. What? Don't hit his horn. Half the money will go to the district council and half Wait, directly to the local community <gasps> on whose <gasps> land the bull <laughs> drops dead. Fantastic ball. And a great shot. Well oh, done, nice, Constantine. That's a nice ball. Oh, beautiful ball. Oh, yeah, nice ball. See, that's in a mafia's high The wildlife benefits in the long run because it's used sustainably. The people benefit because they get money for much needed development. Oh, well done. That's a good shot. Great shooting. You hit him perfectly, eh? Oh, oh, oh wait, wait, wait. Can, can you take one more? One of the, like the bull riding that they do in Texas. Got a, like, like I'm holding on to a still bull ride. You see, you're holding on to the bull like this. It's a win-win situation. Unless, of course, you're the bull. Ooh, he's warm.
Nyami Nyami, like many other poor districts in Zimbabwe, has a pile of tusks sitting under lock and key. The locals can't wait for the day it'll be converted into cold, hard cash. That moment may come in 21 months' time, when under the CITES plan, two lots of tusks will be auctioned off and transported to Japan. When Zimbabwe talks about the elephant paying its way, this is really what it's all about. 33 tons of ivory, potentially worth millions and millions of dollars, languishing in a government warehouse in Harare. This is what Zimbabwe wants to sell to Japan. Now, if it can guarantee that only these tasks, that is, the legal stockpile, is sold onto the market, there is a chance that the elephant may benefit. But if the trade can't be controlled, and there are many that fear it can't be, then we could see a return to the wide-scale poaching of the 70s and 80s, which led to the decimation of elephant populations across Africa. Zimbabwe has never stopped dealing in ivory. Throughout the international ban, it ran a legal domestic market in Africa's white gold. But the industry has been hounded by allegations of corruption and mismanagement, which critics say doesn't augur well for a widening of the trade. The fear is that Zimbabwe and the other trading nations will become outlets for illegal ivory, either stockpiled or freshly culled. Can Zimbabwe control the ivory trade? I don't think so. I don't really think so. The record isn't very, very good. The, there's been a parliamentary inquiry, you may, may have heard about, uh, and a report presented to Parliament, which indicated that the National Parks Department is in complete disarray. Um, this is a, a result of a shortage of money to a certain extent, but even more so of an enormous amount of political interference which is taking place in the, in the department. We have had senior staff uh, suspended, uh, their cases take two years to come to completion. Um, uh, political appointees are being put into the department. We have uh, a political appointee now at the head of National Parks who is not qualified in any way to run such a department. That's Mr. McCombie. Yes, Mr. McCombie. We have given all that we have in terms of management of wildlife and uh, we are very proud of it. Willis uh, McCombie rejects allegations of departmental misdealing, particularly the claim by the CITES panel of experts that 10 tonnes of ivory left Zimbabwe illegally last year. We asked Interpol, we asked CITES management and scientific authorities all over the world to track down where that went. As far as our ivory stores is concerned, no ivory came out no ivory was exported. And up to the time the CITES conference was, was held, nobody had substantiated what the panel of experts said. I don't know where they got it. So you would say that your management of that storehouse of ivory is absolutely watertight? Yes. You could not say 100% watertight, but it is watertight according to the standards that we have, we have put in place. And that's what worries the critics. Standards have been sliding in the Department of National Parks and Wildlife Management along with the budget, now only one third of what it was a decade ago. Poaching, although not as prevalent as before the ivory ban, is on the rise, and ground patrols like this one in Nyami Nyami would have little hope of stemming any resurgence in the slaughter of elephants. We're looking at a, an area of about 850,000 acres just of communal land. You've then got the adjacent Matusadana National Park, um, about half that size. You're looking over a million acres. We've probably got a total of 20 at the most steady game scouts trying to patrol an area of that size with you know thousands of people living in the area it, it's impossible to to control
Given the real risk of increased elephant poaching across Africa, once the ban is officially lifted, one must wonder if a resumed ivory trade is just too big a gamble. Zimbabwe can make plenty of money through tourism, trophy hunting, or even a limited trade in elephant hide. All options far less open to corruption. Does it all boil down to basically Zimbabwe needing the money from the ivory? Is that what this is all about? No, no, it is not. It is not the money. It is the concept. Zimbabwe is a sovereign country. If we have a resource, we don't see why we cannot use it. But isn't tourism potentially a much greater asset, or trophy hunting, or possibly the trade in the hide of elephant? It is. But why having a resource from which we can get money to manage wildlife? Why should we lock it up? The African elephant will survive only if those who live alongside it are its guardians, not its enemies. Hence, the international community has decided to go along with Zimbabwe, Namibia and Botswana and give the ivory trade a shot. The onus now is not just on the trading nations, but the whole world to ensure that that doesn't mean a sitting shot for poachers.